All, All right, right, guys, I have three boxes today. Yeah. They're pretty heavy. They're like mildly heavy. Peeking at the card. <laughs> Tools. Every good gemologist has a, what do you call the thing that you put on your belt if you're fixing something? A tool, a tool belt. <laughs> Because every good gemologist has a tool belt. We don't wear ours on our belts. Is this why you told me to wear plaid? You're like Tim the Taylor tool man. Tim Taylor the tool man there. <laughs> and I have really awesome gemstone tools and gemologists love tools because that's what helps us figure out what is, you know, what's going on. What is the stone? And I always tell you guys don't cite ID and today we're gonna learn how gemologists figure things out. I, you know, I really hope it's not a screwdriver because I, my screwdriver skill, I'm not very good with screwdrivers, hammers. I probably would smack my finger. I recently learned how to hang pictures. I can hit nails. I'm not good at tools to fix things. I'm great at tools to cook things and I am awesome at tools of gemology. So let's do this, right? Cute. This is Chelsea filter, London Dicroscope. Do I look like Inspector Gadget? Oh, here, so we'll just put these in here. All right, guys, so later when I'm questioning where I put the filter and the dichroscope, it's in my front pocket. Refractometer and disgusting smelling refractometer fluid. Fun fact, this stuff is like 80 bucks a little vile, and it smells vile. And this is a very important thing. And a polariscope and a flashlight. Flashlight to be used with the polariscope, a refractometer. Maybe bless the polariscope. Gemologists love tools because tools allow us to use kind of our deductive reasoning skills and our critical thinking skills to run tests. And these tests, they tell us certain properties about what is going on with the stone. So what's great about all of these, first of all, is that the tools that we're gonna talk about today, they're small. So one of the main tools that gemologists use is a microscope, and I love microscopes, but here's the thing about microscope. I can't throw a microscope in my pocket, but I can throw these in my pocket, and these could easily fit in a bag. So what's great about these is if you're in the field or if you're at a trade show, you can have your tools with you and you don't have to worry about you know, figuring out what a stone is, you've got them right here. The first thing when you have a gemstone, found a gemstone. When I was in gemology school, we had this thing, I've talked about it before, it was called the 20 stone test. You had 20 stones and you had to correctly identify them all. You couldn't spell anything wrong. You had to get all the treatments right. So you use these tools to figure out what stones. And so today we're gonna do a very, very brief explanation of each of these tools, how you use them and why they're important. We're gonna start with the refractometer. This is one of my favorite tools. It was probably the first one I actually learned how to use in gemology school. And it was always, whenever I was doing my 20 stone or I was practicing for the 20 stone, this was always the first thing I used after a microscope and after looking at just the basics of, you know, what the stone looked like. Were there scratches? Were, what was the color like? What you do is this thing right here, it's called like hemicylinder. So what you do is you take a drop of these, this refractometer fluid and it smells disgusting. And you put it right here and you would have a light source right here. So then you shine this light source, we'll pretend in the back. And what you do is you put, you find a flat facet clean and you stick it right here. Then you see kind of like a ruler and has a series of lines and then you, you see like a series of numbers. So I see 1.3, 1 1.4, 1 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, and 1.8. What I'm seeing is, you know, the light kind of bounces through the stone and then there's these horizontal lines and the stone will, there'll be like a black bar on these horizontal lines and that's your refractive index. So why is the refractive index important? Well, you know, no two stone will have the exact same refractive index. Like for instance, since sapphire is a 1.76 and a 1.77. So if I see this line that's kind of in that area, I know that, okay, 1.76, 1.77, that's probably a sapphire, and it narrows down and kind of kicks all the other gemstones out. So it gives you a really, really easy way to initially kind of figure it out what's going on, what, what kind of stone could this be. Never ever would I only look at a stone and then only get the refractive index. I think that you need 
more tests. This isn't definitive, but it's a really great way to help out any gemologist, whether you're a newbie starting out or you've been in the business for a long time. So I'm getting about a 1.75 reading on this. If I had my big lab manual, I would be able to look through and say, all right, what is a stone that is transparent, you know, kind of a pinkish red and has a 1.75 reading. So then I would use all of that and then I would get a list of stones that it could be and then I would dive further using more tests. Then I would figure out what kind of stone this is. This is just a really easy way to do it. I absolutely love this tool because it's, you know, it's not infallible. It's not definitive. I'm not gonna be able to say, all right, pink stone 1.75, it's this. You're always gonna wanna dig a little bit deeper and you're gonna wanna use more tools to figure out what it is. So you'll see a lot of gemologists, they use this if they're appraising stones, if they're working in the lab, they'll use tools just like this. And I think that's really cool. And I think any gemologist will tell you that. That's the basics. Okay, so now we've got the polariscope. Need a light source. So this is a really great way, kind of like another step after you use the refractometer to figure out what kind of stone this is. This is not a tool that you would use by itself. I would never take this stone and say, all right, it's pink, it's transparent. What does it look like on the polariscope? I would never just use this. It's a great way to figure out whether a stone is like singly refractive, doubly refractive. And you're gonna get this kind of like a pattern when you look through these two filters and that's gonna help you determine what's going on in the stone. And then that determination will also help you figure out, it'll kind of narrow down your choices for whether this is a garnet or a sapphire or whatever. Next is, I'm gonna choose one of my favorites. So everyone, I like color, 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 color. Maybe that's why I like colored stones so much. So this is the dichroscope. All right, so there's two types of dichroscopes. There's the London dichroscope, which is what I have here. And then there's a calcite dichroscope. For today, we're just gonna talk about the London dichroscope. A lot of people think this is really easy to use. Dichroscope has to do with pleochroism. So pleochroism is when you look at a stone and if you tilt it, you kind of see different colors. Some pleochroic stones that you may know, andalusite, tanzanite, tourmaline. So this is a really great way to figure out if a stone is dichroic or trichroic, and that's another way to kind of um, weed out other gemstones. And it's also a great way to figure out if a stone is pleochroic. And if a stone is pleochroic, it is doubly refractive, and that's a great way to you know kind of knock out the singly refractive stones. So this is a awesome way to you know learn more about stones. It's an awesome way to kind of figure out what you're looking at. I really like this because I remember when I was looking at Andalusite for the first time, I loved looking at, oh, you know, like I turn it this way and I see these colors, and I turn it this way and I see these colors. I mean, y'all know I love color so much. So this is just a really cool way to learn. All right, guys, this is a Chelsea filter. It was developed in London in the 1930s at the Polytechnic in London. Forgot the name of the school. Anyways, this is sometimes called the emerald filter because it's used to determine or to kind of distinguish emeralds from other green stones. It searches for chromium. This is a great, great tool, just like the dichroscope because you literally, you saw me put it in my pocket. So this is something that if a gemologist was at a, a trade show or out in the field, this is a really, really, both of them are really, really quick and easy ways to figure out what you're looking at. Always want to have the correct light source. And this is just another way to kind of kick out other options of what a gemstone could be. Remember, dichroscope, pleochroism, filter, think of chromium. These are the four tools that we talked about today. There are more tools. In the future, I wanna talk about microscopes, spectroscopes. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about proper use of tweezers and loops. Maybe, just maybe, if I cross my fingers and beg and plead, we can actually get into the lab here at JTV and talk to some of the really awesome gemologists that work in the lab and we can see some really cool high-end instruments. Instru well, I don't wanna call it an instrument. High-end cool stuff. Closer look. I'm gonna say closer look at the refractometer because this was probably one of the first tools I used. And I remember pulling it out of the box in gemology school and being like, what is this thing? And then it turned out to be the tool that I really depended on the most for my 20 stone test and the tool that really helped me learn a lot about gemology. Take a closer look. We've got refractometer fluid has to be used with this. Take a closer look. We've got this nifty little thing here. Got that right there. This is where you look at. And then this back part is where you put your light source in.
So comment below, refractometer, polariscope, dichroscope, Chelsea filter. If you wanna learn more, let me know and maybe that'll be the first of a series. Don't forget, comments, like and subscribe, tell your friends about gemology and how cool gemstones are and I will see you soon.